Hey there Dev Squad, Furtis here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can get your obstacles to spawn into your scene randomly. Now in today's video we're going to be setting up a simple pipe obstacle and when you run over that it is going to end over the game. Now what we're going to be focusing on in today's video is importing the static mesh, setting up the material and then working on the blueprint code to get it to spawn randomly into one of your free lanes and this is going to be on every single tile that we've got. Now before we go any further you guys need to make sure you have got the latest version of the Endless Runner files. If you don't have this already just go ahead and download it, the link for that is in the description below. Within these files you have a meshes folder with a static mesh for the pipe so the player is going to be able to see the pipe, this is a 3D object. So what I need you guys to do is to go ahead and import this into your content browser. So within your runner files folder, right click and add a new folder called static meshes or just meshes will do. Open this up and then find low underscore obstacles underscore pipes and then with this you are just going to drag and drop this into your content browser to import it. Now what you do need to make sure you do is underneath the mesh section you have the little drop down. Make sure you click that and combine your meshes so it's going to import it as one big pipe obstacle. Once you've done this go ahead and just click import all and then close a little message log we don't need anything in there. Now what we have got is two materials that it is created for us. Now you can use one of these, it's up to you, as your material. I'm going to delete the connector one because we don't really need this and I'm going to open up our main pipe material. And within here what we're going to do is just give it a bit of a red metallic colour. Now at the moment it's got this little parameter in here, if you do have this delete it and instead what we're going to do is just right click and add a constant free vector. Now with our pipe we are just going to give this a solid red colour so that it is nice and visible to the player. So we've created this vector free um, and I've hooked it up into my base colour that is going to define the overall colour of the material. In the details panel in the bottom left here we are going to go to our constant and set the R to 1. So this is going to increase the red to 1 and because the, R, the G and the B are also at 0 this is going to be completely red. Now what you can do if you want to is you can add other effects to make this pipe look a little bit nicer. So if you want to you could add a constant into the metallic value um, and then if you set this value in the details panel to 1 it is going to make it more metallic and you can see it has now come out with this metallic look. You can also play around with roughness, specular and so on, it's entirely up to you um, but for now I am just going to leave it at metallic, that is going to be enough for me because it's a metal pipe. And then I'm just going to press apply to apply those changes and we can now assign this material to our static mesh for our pipe. So you can see it's already done this automatically because that material was linked to it and what we should have is a pipe that looks a little bit something like this. And the idea of this obstacle is to just get the player to sort of trip over on it and fall over. So let's talk about now then how we can actually get this being spawned into our tile blueprint. So within your runner files, go to your blueprints folder and open up your master tile. Once it's open, what we're going to do is we are going to create a function. Actually, no, uh, yeah, we're going to create a function. So create a function and we're going to call this spawn obstacles. And this function is just going to be something that's going to be played as soon as we spawn in this tile and essentially what it's going to do is spawn an obstacle at each of the three lanes that we've created. So within here what we're going to do is we are going to be creating 
a switch on integer node. Now, what we're going to do with this switch on integer node is if the integer equals 1, we're going to tell it, uh, if it equals 0, we're going to tell it to spawn nothing. If it's equal to 1, it's going to spawn a pipe. And you're going to be doing this with all of your obstacles and we're going to be getting a random integer into there to make it randomly spawn an obstacle or randomly spawn a gap. Now, if you guys want to add more logic to spawning the obstacles, you can do, but for now, this system is going to work. So, switch on int. For, we're going to add a pin for zero. Now, with this, if it goes to zero, we're going to tell it to do nothing, so we want a gap. On one, we are going to tell it to spawn an actor from class. And the class for this is going to be a blueprint containing the pipe. Now, we don't have one already, so we're just going to leave that blank. And the spawn transform, we are going to be using the lane zero transform. So drag this in, and then with this, we are just going to get the lane zero and get the transform. So get world transform and hook it up into here. And then for the selection, we are going to hook this up to a get random, so random integer in range with the minimum being zero and the maximum being one. It is going to do its bit. So what this is doing is on lane zero, it is going to either spawn in nothing or spawn in a blueprint class that we're about to create randomly. Now we need to create that blueprint class. So within our blueprints folder, right click, add a blueprint class with a type actor, and we're going to give us the name obstacle underscore pipe. Open this up and we're just going to add a static mesh component into here. And this static mesh is just going to be our pipe. So we are able to see it. So just type in static mesh or just find it manually. And then in the details panel on the right hand side, search for your pipe and hook this up to your static mesh. So low underscore obstacle pipe, hit compile. And then what I'm going to do is quickly drag this into the scene so I can get an idea of the scale. And because I haven't got a floor tile there, you can't really tell. So what I'm going to do is open up my master tile, set the class to obstacle underscore pipe like we just told it to and I'm going to hit compile hit play and what you should have is nothing spawning in and the reason why there's nothing spawning in is because with our tile in our main event graph from the begin play we have not told it to spawn the obstacle so hook this up hit compile and then hit play again and you can see now it is actually spawning our pipes in here now we are able to run over them that is just because they're so small they're like steps um, so what we need to do is to actually modify our little blueprint that we've created to first of all rotate them and make them bigger so they actually count as obstacles so go back into here open up your obstacle for your pipe and then what we're going to do is rotate this 90 degrees and then we are going to make it a little bit bigger as well so scale it up nice and big like that. Compile it and then press play. And what you should have is something that looks a bit like this. Now what you don't want them to do is to sort of clash with the other lanes. So you've just got to keep going in backwards and forwards, just adjusting this size, the scale, the rotation and everything until you get your pipe to the size that you like. And I think for now, this is going to do for me. So what I can do is I can jump over these pipes, um, but I cannot walk through them. Now, we still need to add functionality for killing the player when they run over something like that, but that's going to be something for another video. We're going to have a whole end game screen. We're going to have the player drop into the ground and all of that good stuff. So you can see the functionality for that is working. Sometimes it's spawning the obstacle, sometimes it isn't. What I need to do now is to just get that to do the same thing on lane uh, 0, 1, and 2. At the moment, it's just on lane 0. So go back into your event graph 
for your master tile, open up spawn obstacles. And all we're going to do is just get this code that we've got here already. And we are going to paste this in here three times, one for each lane. So we got the first one over here. I'm going to select all of this and press C to comment it. And then it's going to give us the name lane zero. So we know this is for the first lane or, you know, lane zero. Hook this up to the second. And with this, we are going to comment it. And we're going to set this to lane one. And then we're going to go in and hook this up as well. Select the last bit and set this to lane two. Now with this, we need to set the lane transform from lane zero to one and two over here so it gets the right transform, so it spawns it in the right place. So get a reference to lane one, hook it up into your get world transform over here. For this one, do the same thing, get your lane two and hook it up. If we hit compile now, jump into our game, what you should see is that they are now spawning on every single lane that we've got here. Now, you can see sometimes there's a gap, sometimes there isn't a gap. What you can do is play around with just how random the spawning is. And the way you're gonna do this is by working with this random range. So for example, if you add more pins, if you have more of them empty, then there is going to be more of a chance of there not spawning an obstacle there. But that is something for you guys to play around with. For now, this is working the way that I wanted it to. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to teach you in today's video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep curating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.